Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India once again to the NPTEL lecture series on uh, integral equations. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about the freedom theory to obtain resolvent kernel such that we can find the solution of inhomogeneous freedom integral equation of the second kind. So, we are going to discuss that freedom theory. of freedom theory to obtain uh, to obtain resolvent kernel to obtain resolvent kernel for freedom integral equation which is given by y x equal to f x plus lambda integral a to b k of x comma s y s d s. Now, you can recall that we have this already discussed other possible methods to solve this kind of integral equation and also we have obtained resolvent kernel to find out solution of this non-homogeneous uh, freedom integral equation of the second kind. But here we are going to discuss the method introduced by freedom which is comes out to be uh, ratio of two infinite series that actually constitute the resolvent kernel. And as per the freedom theory, the solution, solution of this equation the solution of this equation is given by solution of this equation with the help of freedom resolvent kernel r x s lambda is y x is equal to f x plus lambda integral a to b r of x comma s lambda f s d s, where this resolvent kernel r x comma s is ratio of d x s lambda and delta lambda, where we assume that this delta lambda is not equal to 0. And these three quantities r x s lambda, this is known as Fredholm resolvent kernel. this d x s lambda, this is known as Fredholm minor and delta lambda, this is called Fredholm determinant. this is called Fredholm determinant. And now, we have to find out or define this Fredholm minor and Fredholm determinant such that we can evaluate Fredholm resolvent kernel and which in turn gives us the solution for the Fredholm integral equation. 
this freedom minor d x s lambda this is defined by k x comma s plus sigma n running from 1 to infinity minus 1 whole to the power n lambda to the power n divided by factorial n b n x comma s where each b n x comma s can be evaluated using this formula b n x comma s that is equal to c n k x comma s minus n integral a to b k of x comma xi b n minus 1 xi comma s d xi. This formula is valid for n equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on and in particular b 0 x comma s is defined by k x comma s. So, using this definition b 0 x comma s equal to k x comma s of course, the formula for freedom minor can be written as b 0 x comma s plus sigma n running from 1 to infinity and so on. So, we can use this definition. Now, in order to evaluate this b n x comma s we need the expression or the values of c n these quantities c n s these are defined by c n equal to integral a to b b n minus 1 x comma x d x where n ranging from 1, 2, 3 and so on and in particular c 0 is defined as exactly equal to 1. So, with de these definitions for c 0 and c n now we can define delta lambda this is equal to 1 plus sigma n running from 1 to infinity minus 1 whole to the power n lambda to the power n by factorial n times c n. So, this is the definition for delta lambda we have already defined uh, d x s lambda. So, if we are able to evaluate each b n x comma s and uh, this uh, c n s then we can find the resolvent kernel freedom resolvent kernel r x comma s. Now, in some forthcoming examples you can see that most of the time we will find that this c n and b n are 0 for values of n starting from say 2 and onwards. So, in most of the cases you can find first few values c j s those are non zero and accordingly first few expressions for b n those are non zero and rest of the quantities are exactly equal to 0 and this happens most of the time if we use the kernels those are uh, separable kernel that is called degenerate kernel then most of the cases you can find after some uh, c j s first few non zero c j s rest of the c j s will be equal to 0 and accordingly we can find those b n s are also equal to 0 and therefore, instead of this infinite series for delta lambda and d x s lambda most of the time we will be having a polynomial containing a finite number of terms because rest of the terms are identically equal to 0. So, first we consider one example where we are just defining uh, the some kernel which is a of course, separable kernel and for that we construct the freedom resolvent kernel using this formula. So, first example that we can consider k x comma s this is given by 1 plus x plus s where minus 1 less than equal to x comma s less than equal to 1. So, you can recall as per definition c 0 equal to 1 b 0 x comma s this is equal to k x comma s. So, this is equal to 1 plus x plus s. Next with this b 0 we can calculate c 1 
you have to keep in mind that formula for B n involved C n and B n minus 1 and formula for C n involved B in n minus 1, we already have C 0 and B 0 as per definition B 0 is k x comma s. So, using this expression for B 0 x comma s, now we can calculate C 1. So, C 1 this is equal to minus 1 to plus 1 B 0 x comma x d x. So, this is equal to integral minus 1 to plus 1 2 x plus 1 d x and after evaluating this integral you can calculate this c 1 is equal to 2 because the integral minus 1 to plus 1 2 x d x this is equal to 0 and rest of the term will result in 2. Now, for b 1 x comma s as per the given formula this is c 1 multiplied by k x comma s then minus integral minus 1 to plus 1 k x comma xi multiplied with b 0 xi comma s d xi and this will be equal to c 1 we have already obtained this is equal to 2. So, 2 into 1 plus x plus s minus integral minus 1 to plus 1 1 plus x plus xi this multiplied with 1 plus xi plus s d xi because k x xi is nothing but 1 plus x plus xi and b 0 xi s is actually k xi s. So, k xi s equal to 1 plus xi plus s and if you evaluate this integral then it will result in minus 2 into x s plus 1 third. This will be the expression for b 1 x s. So, we have obtained b 1 x s. With this b 1 x s we can calculate c 2. C 2 is equal to integral minus 1 to plus 1 b 1 x comma x. So, this will be equal to minus 2 integral minus 1 to plus 1 x square plus 1 third d x and after evaluating this integral you can find this will be equal to minus 8 by 3. So, now we have obtained C 2 already we have in our hand b 1 x comma s. So, now we can calculate b 2 x comma s. b 2 x comma s is equal to c 2 k x comma s minus 2 integral minus 1 to plus 1 k x comma xi multiplied with b 1 xi comma s d xi this is the expression you can recall already we have defined this formula for b n. So, therefore, substituting these expressions we can find this will be minus 8 by 3 multiplied with 1 plus x plus s and when we will be substituting for b 1 xi comma s. So, this minus 2 will be clubbed with this minus 2. So, we will be having plus 4 integral minus 1 to plus 1 1 plus x plus xi and from here we will be having xi s plus one third d xi and if you evaluate this integral then you can find this integral is exactly equal to 0. Now, once you have b 2 x comma s equal to 0. So, therefore, c 3 equal to integral minus 1 to plus 1 b 2 x comma x d x this should be equal to 0 and once c 3 equal to 0 then immediately b 3 x comma s according to the formula this is c 3 k of x comma s minus 3 integral minus 1 to plus 1 k of x comma xi b 2 xi comma s d xi. Now, this c 3 equal to 0 
and b 2 xi comma s equal to 0. So, you will be having b 3 equal to 0 and therefore, you can easily uh, understand that all c 4, c 5 and so on this constant should be identically equal to 0. Accordingly, b 4 x comma xi, b 5 x comma xi and so on all of them will be equal to 0. So, as c 3 and onwards are all equal to 0 and uh, b 3 and onwards all these quantities are identically equal to 0. So, therefore, we can find that d x comma s lambda d of x comma s lambda this will be equal to k of x comma s minus lambda b 1 x comma s because uh, b 2 x comma s equal to 0 b 3 x comma s equal to 0. So, so, none of the term will come here and ultimately you will find this d x comma s lambda is equal to 1 plus x plus s plus 2 lambda multiplied with x s plus 1 third. So, this is actually your d of x comma s colon lambda and delta lambda this will be equal to 1 minus lambda c 1 plus lambda square by 2 c 2 and rest of the term c 3 c 4 are all identically equal to 0. So, therefore, we will be having 1 minus 2 lambda minus 4 by 3 lambda square. So, this is the expression for delta lambda. So, in case this delta lambda is not equal to 0, assuming this delta lambda not equal to 0, we can obtain the corresponding resolvent kernel R x s lambda this is equal to 1 plus x plus s plus 2 lambda multiplied with x s plus 1 third whole divided by 1 minus 2 lambda minus 4 by 3 lambda square. So, this is the um, resolvent kernel freedom resolvent kernel obtained by freedom method. Next we solve an freedom integral equation using the same method. The given problem is y x this is equal to x plus lambda integral 0 to 1 4 x s minus x square y s d s. So, this is our problem. So, in this case k x comma s is equal to 4 x s minus x square this is our actually kernel. So, our first task is using the freedom method we have to find out the freedom resolvent kernel and for that purpose we have c 0 equal to 1 b 0 x comma s that is equal to k x comma s that is equal to 4 x s minus x square. Now, we can calculate c 1, c 1 is equal to integral 0 to 1 b 0 x comma x d x. Now, b 0 x comma x this will be equal to 4 x square minus x square. So, that means 3 x square. So, integral 0 to 1 3 x square d x and after evaluating this integral we can find this is equal to 1. Next we can calculate b 1 x comma s b 1 x comma s as per definition c 1 k x comma s minus integral 0 to 1 k of x comma s it will be x comma xi multiplied with b 0 xi comma s d xi. So, substituting this expression we can find this b 1 x comma s this will be equal to 4 
x s minus x square because c 1 equal to 1. So, c 1 k x s is nothing but k x s minus integral 0 to 1 4 x xi minus x square this multiplied with 4 xi s minus xi square d xi. This will be equal to 4 x s minus x square minus integral 0 to 1 16 x s xi plus x square xi square minus 4 x square xi s minus 4 x xi cube d xi and evaluating this integral you can find 4 x s minus x square minus from uh, first one you can find 16 by 3 x s plus 1 third x square minus uh, it will be plus plus 2 uh, x square s and then plus x this will be actually minus because integral of xi square from limit 0 to 1 is 1 third. So, minus 16 by 3 x s then xi square d xi again 1 third. So, minus 1 third x square and from here half into 4 x square s. So, minus with this minus combined with give you plus 2 x square s and finally, 4 x by 4. So, this will be plus x and after rearranging the terms and simplification you will be having 2 x square s minus 4 by 3 x square plus x minus 4 by 3 x s. So, this is our b 1 x comma s that we have calculated and as we know the b value of b x expression for b x comma s. So, we can calculate c 2 c 2 equal to integral 0 to 1 b 1 x comma x d x. So, this is equal to integral 0 to 1 2 x cube minus 4 by 3 x square plus x minus 4 by 3 x square d x. And after evaluating this integral, this will be half minus 4 by 9 plus half minus 4 by 9 and this will be equal to 1 by 9. So, this is the value for C 2. With this value for C 2, if we calculate B 2 x comma s, this will be equal to C 2 k x comma s minus 2 integral 0 to 1 4 x comma xi minus x square. This multiplied with we have to write the expression for b 1 xi comma s. Now, b 1 xi comma s is 2 xi square s minus 4 by 3 xi square plus xi minus 4 by 3 xi s d xi. And if you evaluate this integral and after simplification it will comes out to be exactly equal to 0. And once you have b 2 x comma s, this is equal to 0. So, immediately c 3 equal to integral 0 to 1 b 2 x comma x d x, this is equal to 0. And using the formula for b 3 x comma s, you can calculate this is equal to 0. So, c 3 equal to 0 and b 2 x comma s equal to 0 will give you b 3 x comma s equal to 0 and therefore, c 4 should be equal to 0 according to the formula c 4 equal to integral 0 to 1 b 3 x comma x d x and therefore, b 4 x comma s equal to 0 and hence we have all the constants c 3, c 4, c 5 and so on those are identically equal to 0 and the functions b 2 x comma s, b 3 x comma s all these functions are also equal to 0 that means b 4, b 5 all of them are identically equal to 0 and therefore, 
delta lambda that is freedom determinant is given by 1 minus c 1 lambda plus c 2 lambda square by 2 that is equal to 1 minus lambda plus lambda square divided by 18 and d x s lambda this d x s lambda this is equal to 4 x s minus x square minus lambda into b 1 x that is 2 x square s minus 4 by 3 x square plus x minus 4 by 3 x s this is the expression for b 1 x comma s and therefore, solution to the given problem is y x equal to x plus lambda divided by 1 minus lambda plus lambda square by 18 then integral 0 to 1 d of x s lambda s d s because f x equal to x. So, f s is equal to s. So, this is the solution to the given integral equation. Next we consider one more example this example is taken from uh, Alan Jerry's book on integral equation where first of all we will find out the solution of the given freedom integral equation by this method and then we will discuss another uh, formula by which you can evaluate the quantities b 1 x s b 2 x s and so on and the constants c 1 c 2 and so on in terms of repeated integrals and where integrands are actually determinants of order n plus 1 and of order n respectively. So, first of all we consider the problem here the problem is y x is equal to f x plus lambda integral 0 to 1 x e to the power s y s d s this is the given problem clearly b 0 x comma s is equal to kernel of the given problem k x comma s. So, this is equal to x e to the power s. So, this is our kernel and c 0 by definition this is equal to 1. So, now we can calculate c 1 this is equal to integral 0 to 1 x e to the power x d x evaluating you can find e to the power x into x minus 1 limit 0 to 1 and this will result in this is equal to 1. Now, if we calculate b 1 x comma s this is equal to c 1 k x comma s minus integral 0 to 1 x e to the power xi multiplied with xi e to the power s d xi. So, this will be equal to since c 1 equal to 1. So, x e to the power s minus we can take x e to the power s outside the integral x e to the power s then integral 0 to 1 xi e to the power xi d xi. Here we have already evaluated integral 0 to 1 x e to the power x d x equal to 1. So, therefore, this will be equal to x e to the power s minus x e to the power s into 1. So, that means this is identically equal to 0. So, b 1 x comma s is equal to 0 and once b 1 x comma s is equal to 0. So, therefore, c 2 this is equal to 0 and c 2 equal to 0 this implies b 2 x comma s this is also equal to 0 and therefore, we can write c n this is equal to 0 for n equal to 2 3 and so on and b n x comma s this is equal to 0 for n equal to 1 2 3 and so on. So, therefore, d x s lambda this is only k x comma s. So, that is equal to x 
e to the power s and delta lambda this is equal to 1 minus lambda c 1 since we have evaluated c 1 equal to 1. So, this will be equal to 1 minus lambda and therefore, the resolvent kernel obtained using Fredholm method that is r x s lambda this is equal to x e to the power s divided by 1 minus lambda this is the resolvent kernel and therefore, solution to the given problem is given by y x equal to f x plus lambda whole divided by 1 minus lambda integral 0 to 1 x e to the power s f s d s this is the solution to the given integral equation. Now, we define the alternative way by which we can calculate this b n x comma s and c n s. Of course, we have to keep in mind that b 0 x comma s is nothing but k x comma s and c 0 is also equal to 1. So, the alternative way to expressing b uh, n x and c n. b n x comma s and c n and here this alternative way one sense it is important that in earlier method you have observed that uh, calculation of b n x comma s depends upon the x value of c n and the expression for b n minus 1 x s and evaluation of c n was related to the expression for b n minus 1 x comma s. Now, in this alternative approach we do not need the expressions for b n minus 1 in order to calculate c n and the value of c n and the expression for b n minus 1 in order to evaluate b n x comma s. So, first of all we define this b n x comma s is equal to integral a to b integral a to b up to integral a to b then determinant k x comma s k x comma s 1 up to k x comma s n this is the first row. Second row k s 1 comma s k s 1 comma s 1 proceeding in this way k of s 1 comma s n. Finally, last row will be k s n comma s k s n comma s 1 last term k s n comma s n this determinant d s 1 d s 2 up to d s n. This is the expression for b n x comma s and c n this is defined by integral a to b integral a to b integral a to b this determinant k of s 1 comma s 1 k of s 1 comma s 2 up to k of s 1 comma s n this is the first row. Second row k of s 2 comma s 1 k of s 2 comma s 2 dot dot k of s 2 comma s n proceeding in this way last row will be k of s n comma s 1 k of s n comma s 2 last term is k of s n comma s n then d s 1 d s 2 
up to d s n. So, in both these cases although we have to evaluate this nth order integrals, but from previous examples what we have discussed you can able to understand using the property of determinant we will be able to prove that b n will be equal to 0 for values of n say 3, 4 and onwards or for example, say 2, 3 and onwards. Now, with this alternative definition for the expression of b n x comma s and c n, we can solve the last problem that we have just uh, solved that is the y x equal to f x plus integral 0 to 1 x e to the power s f s d s pre multiplied by lambda. So, this problem we are going to solve using these definitions for uh, b n uh, x comma s and uh, c. So, c 0 equal to 1 b 0 x comma s this is equal to x e to the power s. Now, you can see that c 1 this will involve only one integral that is integral 0 to 1 d s 1 and here determinant consists of only one term that is we are having 1 cross 1 determinant that is a scalar quantity k s 1 s 1 d s 1. So, this will be integral 0 to 1 s 1 e to the power s 1 d s 1 this is equal to 1. Then b 1 x comma s this is equal to integral 0 to 1 second order determinant k x comma s k x comma s 1 then k s 1 comma s and then k s 1 comma s 1 d s 1 and if we substitute the expressions. So, this will be 0 to 1 determinant x e to the power s x e to the power s 1 then s 1 e to the power s 1 and s 1 this will be s 1 e to the power s and this is s 1 e to the power s 1 d s 1. So, from the first row first column sorry first column we can take e to the power s common from the second column we can take out e to the power s 1 column common. So, e to the power s integral 0 to 1 e to the power s 1 then determinant x s 1 x s 1 d s 1 this determinant is 0. So, clearly b 1 x comma s is equal to 0. Next if we calculate c 2 this will be equal to double integral 0 to 1 0 to 1 determinant k of s 1 comma s 1 then k of s 1 comma s 2 second row k of s 2 comma s 1 and then k of s 2 comma s 2 d s 1 d s 2. If we substitute the expressions for kernels it will be s 1 e to the power s 1 then s 1 e to the power s 2 then s 2 e to the power s 1 and s 2 e to the power s 2 d s 1 d s 2. So, if we take out the exponentials from the determinant that means taking e to the power s 1 common from the first column and e to the power s 2 from the second column then e to the power s 1 plus s 2 multiplied with first column s 1 s 2 second column of the determinant is again s 1 s 2 d s 1 d s 2. So, this is equal to 0. So, although here we do not have any link between uh, b 2 and c 2 in order to evaluate them using this alternative method. So, this c 2 equal to 0. Now, in order to understand the rest of the expressions for b 3 and onwards will be equal to 0, 
we can just have a look at the expressions for b 2 x. If we look at the expression for b 2 x comma s, this will be double integral 0 to 1, 0 to 1 a third order determinant. I am not writing the um, that is k x comma s, I am directly substituting their expressions. First row will consist of x e to the power s, then x e to the power s 1 and then x e to the power s 2. Then second row will be s 1 e to the power s, s 1 e to the power s 1, s 1 e to the power s 2 and third row is s 2 e to the power s, then s 2 e to the power s 1 and then s 2 e to the power s 2 with respect to d s 1 d s 2 and you can write this is equal to integral 0 to 1 integral 0 to 1 e to the power s plus s 1 plus s 2 multiplied with determinant first row x s 1 s 2 second row column x s 1 s 2 third column x s 1 s 2 all these columns are identical. So, determinant is exactly equal to 0 and therefore, b 2 x comma s is also equal to 0. So, proceeding in this way and if you are able to understand this argument all other determinants involved with b 3 x comma s b 4 x comma s will produce this kind of determinant uh, each of which will be identically equal to 0 and therefore, all other b 2 x comma s b 3 x comma s are identically equal to 0 and also this kind of determinant will be involved with c j s also and therefore, all the c j s except c 0 and c 1 are identically equal to 0. So, you will be having all these quantities are identically equal to 0. Now, before concluding this lecture, I define three theorems of uh, freedom and before defining those theorems, I just want to uh, recall that in the last lecture, we have considered one example where we have discussed about eigenvalues and eigenfunctions associated with the homogeneous freedom integral equation. You can recall that in case of homogeneous freedom integral equation, we have eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. And with an illustrative example, we have discussed in detail that sometimes those equations may not have any non-trivial solution. And if they have some non-trivial solution, then sometimes they admit infinite number of solutions. So, whenever this lambda satisfies the condition delta lambda equal to 0, that means if we choose a particular value of lambda, which is a 0 of the function delta lambda or in other words, those are the eigenvalues of the associated homogeneous problem, then what will be the nature of solution and in which case we will be having infinite number of solutions, those can be summarized by three theorem of freedom. So, first of all we consider freedom first theorem. Freedom first theorem. It states that the inhomogeneous freedom integral equation, inhomogeneous freedom integral equation y x equal to f x plus lambda integral a to b k of x comma s y s d s, where a less than equal to x comma s less than equal to b, this is the range f x and k x comma s are continuous in finite interval a comma b possesses unique solution unique 
unique continuous solution given by y x equal to f x plus lambda integral a to b r of x comma s lambda f s d s when delta lambda this is not equal to 0 that is lambda is not an eigenvalue. In case delta lambda not equal to 0 that means lambda is not an eigenvalue then this freedom integral equation possesses unique continuous solution that is given by this one. This r x s lambda here I have written in intended to mean the freedom resolvent kernel, but of course by using other method you can also calculate this resolvent kernel which will be a solution of this freedom integral equation. Then second theorem states that in this case we are assuming that the particular lambda involved with the equation say lambda 0 which is an eigenvalue. So, this is Fredholm's second theorem. It states that let lambda 0 is 0 of multiplicity m of delta lambda that is the homogeneous equation that is the homogeneous equation y x equal to lambda 0 integral a to b k of x comma s y s d s possesses m linearly independent non-zero solutions which are denoted by psi phi 1 x phi 2 x up to phi m x then m is finite and the equation u x equal to lambda 0 integral a to b k of s comma s u s d s also possesses m linearly independent solutions which are denoted by psi 1 x psi 2 x up to psi m x. In this case, in this case the inhomogeneous Fredholm integral equation that we have written earlier has no solution. Unless unless f x is orthogonal to each of the functions 
xi j x for j running from 1 to up to m that is integral a to b f x psi r x d x this is equal to 0 for r equal to 1 to up to m. So, we will have non trivial solution whenever this condition that is integral a to b f x psi r x d x equal to 0 that means, this f x is orthogonal to each of the eigen function psi 1 x psi 2 x up to psi m x and these psi 1 x psi 2 x up to psi m x these are the eigen functions of the problem defined by u x equal to lambda 0 integral a to b k s comma x u s d s and last freedom theorem that is the freedom thirds theorem that gives us uh, whenever this condition is satisfied that means, f x satisfies the condition that is uh, psi r x when multiplied with f x integral a to b 0 that means, it is orthogonal to each of the eigen function psi 1 psi 2 up to psi m x. Then the non trivial solution of the equation is given by as a linear combination of this eigen functions this is the Fredholm's third theorem. If lambda equal to lambda 0 and integral a to b f x psi r x d x this is equal to 0, where r equal to 1, 2, 3 up to m hold true, then the solution of inhomogeneous Fredholm integral equation is given by C 1 phi 1 x plus C 2 phi 2 x plus dot dot plus C n phi n x, where C j s j running from 1 to m are arbitrary constants. So, these are actually three Fredholm's theorem associated with the freedom integral equation of the second kind and in case this uh, lambda is not an eigen value of the associated homogeneous problem and f x and k x comma is that is cardinal those are continuous over the interval a comma b then we have unique solution and in case lambda equal to lambda 0 this is an m fold eigen value or a 0 of delta lambda of multiplicity m, then we will be having m eigen functions. And if f x satisfies this orthogonality condition that is integral a to b f x psi r x d x equal to 0 for r running from 1 to m, then we have uh, infinite number of solutions for the inhomogeneous freedom integral equation, because this c 1, c 2 up to c n these are all arbitrary constants and a linear combination of these eigen functions that is c 1 phi 1 x plus c 2 phi 2 x plus up to dot dot that is c n uh, phi m x this will be the solution of this this last term will be c m phi m x where c j is ranging from 1 to m this is the infinite number of solutions for the uh, inhomogeneous freedom integral equation. Today I stop at this point. In next lecture, we will be considering uh, Hilbert Smith theory for this freedom integral equation. So, thank you for your attention.